Well, hi there. Welcome back to Travels with Jordy. Out for a little evening sail in Victoria Harbour, which you're not supposed to do, but we're just in the marina, really. Anyway, don't forget, with every episode, I give away a Travels with Jordy t-shirt. If you'd like one, just leave me a comment down below, and uh, I'll pick through uh, randomly from the first 24 hours worth of messages and uh, send you off a shirt. Cheers. Good night. <coughs> So this week I'm carrying on working on MV Zephyrus and building a new electrical cabinet. But first, off to the pub for Saturday morning breakfast. This is the beginning of the uh, new panel, uh, electrical panel, which is going to go underneath the helm and it's going to carry the 110 uh, breaker panel plane. So it's going to carry the, it's going to hold the 110 breaker panel from Blue Sea and the 12 volt breaker panel from Blue Sea, both brand new. And it's going to carry some gauges and the master set of uh, switches that I call um, system switches rather than, they're not the switches you need to operate the boat, which are up right on top on the helm. There are other things like the macerator pump and the water pump, things that you'd want handy, but they're not necessarily for driving the boat. Anyway, so it's going to be made out of two pieces of mahogany that are going to open like a bifold door. So the two panels will be on it. You'll see what I mean. Anyway, just cutting through this 12 inch piece of Sapelli mahogany. This stuff is insanely expensive. <laughs> I just cut off $50 worth of wood here. Okay, that's cool. Um, look at the helm. Basically, the wheel goes here. Um, these are the Morse, well, not Morse controls, but the transmission and engine controls. These will be the gauges and the tack for running the engine, switches for, run, switches for running the engine, lights, etc. And all of this area will be for panels, including the 110 panel that I've got tucked in there, temporarily giving me one circuit so that I can operate things, and the 12 volt circuit, and some gauges and some switches. So I'm going to make this hole a little bit bigger. It's going to be roughly 16 inches wide by 20 inches tall. And it'll have a frame on it, and as I said, it'll open like a bifold. This side will open this way, and this side will be hinged. I can't trust my wrist around that way. Anyway, you'll see as I put it together. Anyway, so I'm going to rip this nice piece of mahogany into some strips first to make the uh, frame, and then cut it in half for the two panels. Yeah. So I'm going to set the fence for eight, normal eight, and uh, then we'll take another pass to clean up the edge. Um, there is some damage on, not there, uh, there's some damage, yeah there's a little bit of damage right here so I know I'm going to be cleaning up the edge a little bit. I had this wood dressed only two sides because I knew I'd be ripping it up into pieces to do various things with so there's no sense paying them to dress these edges. Okay! Okay so I've just brought the saw in a little bit, Whoa, buttery smooth. Take off this messy edge. When taking off a little bit of wood like that, things can go flying. A little bit of sanding and that will be one perfect piece of wood. Okay, so let's turn the remaining wood into some one inch strips, roughly one inch strips for uh, the framing. It's really windy here today and the boat is rocking quite a bit which is a bit disconcerting when you're running the table saw. It's like whoosh. Sh okay, can't see a damn thing through these. There we go. Uh, wait a sec, I should probably just confess I can't see a damn thing anyway. Let's make these as big as they could be. There's no sense wasting wood. Let's make them an inch and a quarter. This piece already has a clean edge of course. So now we have some nice frame stock. God, this is such lovely wood. Okay, a nice big sliding compound would be lovely. Not really a boat thing though. Catch it with my foot. Of course, to do these precious cross cuts, I put in the million tooth blade nice and new. Excellent. Ooh, love it. Love it. Okay, a little sanding and they'll be perfect. All right, so I have two doors. Um, now I have to decide how I'm going to make the frame. I'm going to think about this for two minutes, have a sip of beer, and be right back. This is the outside of the whole thing, would be to make it picture frame style. Basically, miter the four corners, 
and you end up with a nice neat frame and there's my two doors and there's all my instruments and my gauges really cool that's so 1950 so I'm gonna go to 1930 and do like a mission style pediment frame and there's the two panels and there's my instruments so what are these are the one inch shock that I already shown you they'll go on the flat these two pieces, top and bottom, are actually going to stick out so that they'll be thicker. So they will meet like, I have to find my other piece of wood, not knock over the camera while I'm at it. So they will meet like that. So I'll get a little bit of a pediment detail with a little bit of easing and then the two panels inside. I think that's a much slicker looking detail. Oh yes, and by the way, you don't have to cut miters. Okay, the actual opening I'm going to have to cut. What I'm going to do is when I put the frame on here, I'm going to put it a quarter of an inch below the existing plywood so that the plywood acts like a door stop. As I bring the door in like this, it'll plunk, land against that and I don't have to create a door stop. Uh, what I'll do is, this is mahogany plywood, I'll sand that, sand that paint off so it'll, when I open it, it'll appear to be all mahogany. Even if I just stain it dark, it'll look fine. This is going to need to be sanded and cleaned up and repainted anyway. What you can tell now is my opening isn't large enough. So what I want to do now is mark the opening um, to cut it out. So this piece here, I'm going to put a quarter of an inch up and a quarter of an inch over. Okay, again, this is not rocket science. I'm just trying to get something reasonably cool. Oh, I don't know, maybe three eighths, maybe a, qu a quarter, we'll call it a quarter. So these are going to be my two control corners and I'm going to get lower and wider. Is it square with this? Can we use this as my straight edge? I really should use a big square. You know what, I'm going to get all deluxe and go get my framing square. Because there's quick and dirty and then there's hack. Alright, I don't build too many houses anymore, but I still have a framing square. So you might say, okay, well, is that square? Well, square to what? When you're working on a boat, anything that looks okay is okay with me. 16, right there. 20 inches. <laughs> this might get me into trouble. There we go. Move this old nasty water absorbing pegboard sound insulation misery that's all through there. And uh, yeah, start to make the frame. Yay! Okay, so that's just a preliminary little tidy up. Um, obviously, as I start to make the frame, we'll, uh, we'll see how tidy that goes. Uh, when I make something like this, I like to make the frame first and make the door fit the frame, rather than make the door first and try to make the frame work well against everything in around the door, because it's much easier to adjust the door to fit the frame. Let's go. Awfully grateful that cordless circular saws have gotten so amazing. Uh, the only thing that I used to have two circular saws, one with a really fine tooth blade in it and one with a more aggressive blade in it and I could just pick up the one I needed. Unfortunately, I can only afford one of these so I'm constantly swapping blades. Um, obviously, when you're going to swap blades, pull the battery out first so there's no chance you cut your finger off. Anyway, this is pretty straightforward. We won't uh, make you watch. Okay. Easy peasy. Now, the work I'm about to do with the saw is work that I would have done on a chop saw years past, a compound miter or some other super elegant chop saw. This isn't gonna go until I put a battery back in it. Somehow, I don't know what it is, maybe it's a guy thing. I always have to rev something when I'm sort of done with it. Okay, I'm just gonna cut these to 20 inches, not very exotic piece of work. And of course, I would have put that in a chop saw. Um, that's fine when you're set up in a shop and you're used to having lots of room. But since 
I started working in the airstream and on the boat, and I had much less room all the time. I got used to bringing the saw to the wood rather than the other way around. And I'm now addicted to working that way because I have no reason to believe that even for the quality of the work I'm trying to get done, which is, you know, okay, not exceptional, that I need to uh, uh, use a chop saw for most of it. And the trick to bringing the saw to the wood is to use a square. So I hold that as a guide. You've seen me do it before. I make one mark on the uh, cut line and then I hold the saw against the fence to make the actual cut. Now that doesn't make a nice square buttery cut. Ooh, it's one piece of wood. No, it's two. Um, I don't know what does. Okay, so these are my two side pieces. They're the same height as the door because after all I'm going to do my head thing across the top. So now I just got to figure out how big to make the little head thing across the top. More thinking. Okay, so here's my two doors and my two side frame pieces on the side. We'll line them up a little bit. Uh, square it up a little bit. Uh, so basically this is going to go like that. And this is going to go like that. Ooh, I like it. So now, it's just a bunch of sanding from my top, my bottom, and my bifold door that's going to open up. I'm really pleased with this sanding. How I love sanding. Let's get on with it. The final tidy up sanding, basically just the corners here by hand. A whole schwack of holes in here. Um, when I attach this stuff, I'm going to just pin it on with my pin nailer, and then afterwards I'll put some screws in from behind. But I want to be able to line it all up with the pin nailer, and that'll make it a lot easier to really tell how it's going to be square. I may not use all these, but it'll be handy to have them all. Okay. Go get the pin nailer. So these are inch and a quarter pins in here, 23 gauge pins, just a bit of scrap. I just want to see how well that sits in there. Yeah, just about disappears and there's enough air pressure to hold that on there. So that, that's barely going to hold it, but it'll tack it enough that it'll all be aligned before I put the screws in the back. All right, let's get to it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, need to pick one side to be the master side. And uh, I'm going to make that the left. And again, because these are just tacked, very, very lightly tacked, I don't have to worry too much if I don't get it right the first time. Just going to put two in for now. That holds it. That's all that matters. Okay, the other one. Okay, now the trick here is to get the spacing right and square all at the same time, a whole bunch of things at once. So I'm going to balance this on top of here, just like that. Use this as a gauge. I'm going to say, it's just there, it's just there, looks good. So let's put the tape on that, see what that looks like. A little less than 16. Because I haven't measured for square yet, I'm just going to put one pin in the top. And then, right about there, and basically that's it, because these now just sit on top, like that. And one on the bottom. And it's done. Let's get the doors in. Beautiful. Here. Okay. That's gonna look like a million bucks. Should we have a quick look at what it looks like with the doors? Very gently. One, two, what do you think of that? If you recall, before I put the frame on, 
I drilled a bunch of screws into the plywood uh, bulkhead panel, whatever it is. I drew, not screws, holes that I could later put screws in from the back side into the mahogany because remember the mahogany is only pinned on right now. That's not enough to hold it permanently. Um, I didn't want to have to drill for, and screw from the front because then I'd have to plug it. Plugs are beautiful, but this is a lot simpler. It does mean though I have to reach in behind and screw towards me using a little stubby screwdriver and that's always fun. There we go. That's not going anywhere. So today, the daunting task of cutting out these um, panels to put the uh, breaker panels in. Uh, there'll be one on each of these panels and then some more room up top for instrumentation and stuff that goes in the, uh, the new uh, hole, the outlet frame, whatever you want to call that I made. Um, of course, there's always a little daunting cutting holes for panels like this, especially the blue sea panels. It's very thin down one edge and you got to make sure you leave enough uh, clearance for the screws to hold. So anyway, that really isn't much of a problem, but I'm just, you know, measuring twice, cutting once, etc. Okay, so I've measured twice, time to cut once. Hmm. Start with a hole to get the jigsaw started. I'm going to start relatively far in because this is a bit of an aggressive drill. Can't seem to find my brad points right now. Actually did a pretty neat job. Considering. Okay, let's get the jigsaw going. Okay, there we go. Now the moment of truth, right? Does it fit? It fits. Beauty. Okay, now just to trace that onto the other board and cut that one. Happily, both the AC panel and the DC panel are the exact same uh, clearances. Alrighty, easy as pie, and again we'll get some tape on here to make sure we don't scratch up this pretty surface. Okay, so let's see if we have a bifold hinge here. So now the moment of truth. Well, actually, I've already test fit them. I know they fit. Um, just going to line it up and drill the holes for the final mounting screws uh, and make sure that it is aligned exactly as it should be. And I'm just going to do one corner first and then make sure it's square before I put the other corner in. But before I do that, I want to show you this really neat thing here. Let me show you the other one. It might be easier to see. Uh, I've shown you these before, but maybe uh, not everyone's seen them. This is a self-centering uh, drill bit. So basically, it's a uh, countersunk spring-loaded guide for a drill. So basically, when you're doing hinges or any of these other countersunk stuff like this, getting that drill exactly in the middle is a bit of a trick. I've gotten not too bad at it over the years, but still, with one of these toys, it is absolutely foolproof. So basically, just centered in the countersink and give it a little push and that hole is dead center that's close enough for me there we go looking pretty snazzy get some of this dust off of here i would say that is looking awesome love it now to do some wiring, connect it all up. Mm. So with the wheel reinstalled, I can show you why I had to make it a bifold. See, if it was a regular cabinet door, it wouldn't open because of the wheel. But making a bifold means it can swing out and around. Pretty slick, huh? 